stock. Man and woman during the Aquarian age will move together as a unit, for he will discover within himself his part of the feminine nature in his own principle. She will discover likewise the male nature within her principle. They surround the circle in which are two huge winged whales performing a mating dance. This could be an exemplification of the tremendous force of sex, the power of it, even between the most gigantic mammals. But the whales are winged, showing a light touch. Sex will not just be a depth-finding experience, but a conscious light touch of celebration and play at the same time. On either side of the two figures and two ladders, one can go either up or down, from the moon symbols above to the wedding symbols below. Above, we see the magnetic moon. This attracting power is exemplified by the four phases developing from the shadow of the Earth. In fact, the moon's phases are mirror projections showing the balancings between Earth and Sun. Earth is the major feminine force of form, while the male force is the energizing force of the Sun. At the top of the card in the medieval deck is Cupid Eros, with a bow and arrow aimed at the heart of the lover, who has little control over what is taking place. He is swept away from the outside by his own unconscious, instead of seeing the feminine as a part of himself, which this new card is really all about. In the unity card, it appears that the negative possessive mother will not win out this time. Man and woman will continue to create and have complete sexual fulfillment and enjoyment together and so be it, say I. The Renewer? Well, why should the death card be here? Well, and of course, it's where it belongs, on the station of the form, the body. And it follows first the birth card and then the procreating unity card. Ideas of birth have advanced with the elimination of unknown fear, and sex hiccups have been dropped. Our conceptions of death, too, are changing. There are even seminars in the United States teaching acceptance of death. It's a natural and inevitable function rather than a frightening the less spoken about it, the better. The idea of reincarnation is becoming more universal. And yet there is still another step to come. The experience that we are all one, manifesting. The Renewer is nothing like the death card of the medieval deck in which the grim reaper is riding a horse or stalking the ground to whack people's heads off with the scythe of Saturn time. In the Renewer card, death is a masked being, masked by a red cloth over his head. He's standing within a crowd, which points to the fact that he's an extremely important entity. Man looks up and sees for himself the skull with the never-ending figure-eight helix of eternity circling its eye sockets and knows that though he wears the skull of death from the moment of his birth, he too is eternal. I always wondered why the woman was outside the crowd, grieving, their head buried in the robe of death. Woman is earth and mother. She emanates space. Death is her son, Saturn. He vibrates from time. But whereas she, 
stayed silently in the background, her son usurped the throne of his father, the great son, and as tyrant has held sway over the powers of death feeling, feet feared by all peoples, but that is changing too. Just as woman has taught, was taught fear and birth agony, and man has lived never knowing when the death blow would strike, now they know that the only fear to fear is fear itself. On the right of the card, there is a desolate landscape where man has devastated the land and a well which is forgotten and drying up. On its edge is a golden chalice, the grail, unused by man for centuries. Now the earth mother can leave the cloak and return to the Garden of Eden and lead man back to that eternal, magnificent fountain which will fill both the dried, cracked well and the glorious chalice. We will learn that once broken, the soap bubble of this ephemeral life we hang on to gives birth to eternal being. The clouds of anxiety which hide the sun then can pour with rain, disperse, and the king of life, energy, the sun, will shine forth with visible authority. I personally don't believe that two-thirds of the world's population is to be wiped out. Many prophets state that it is. Nor do I believe in this tremendous upheavals and destructions that some say will come. It all depends upon man. He must wake up. A new consciousness of death, a creative consciousness is coming in, however. Of this I feel certain. The greatest mysteries of all, life, death, space, time, are revealed in the card of the renewer. And now we turn over the card placed on the place of consciousness. The citadel. The citadel means completed man and also symbolizes six of the great world religions. On the right of the citadel, the magical wand of purity is descending to be rooted on earth. Every religion has taught the descent of spiritual grace into the world. As a result, the black sword thrusts up to cut through ignorance, egotistical ignorance, and to recognize that all facets of the crown of salvation are really one. Both the guarding and energizing the citadel, the lighthouse tower, the tower follows the spine of man, on which are six chakras, revolving wheels. These rotating spheres control the central nervous system through the glands of the body. In the citadel, these have been built up into a functioning whole. In a complete contrast to the image in the Atlantean card, which depicted a pyramid being birthed to Sunda. At the base of the spine is the root chakra. In it, a closed book is seen. It is unopened. This is the sacred Quran of Islam, with a symbol for Muhammad on its cover. The latest word must now be read in a new sense without dogmatism. Being the youngest of the religions, Islam makes a firm foundation. Next comes the black and white yang and yin male and female symbols of China's sacred way, the Tao, in the place of the sexual chakra. Lying at the balancing pivot that energizes the entire physical body, this chakra is the secret of the strength behind judo, karate, and other defense techniques. The chakra's flow then moves to the brow, the place of the third eye. 
Here, a joyous serpent standing on its tail symbolizes the risen kundalini energy of India's Hindu religion, the oldest religion extant to the world today. At the throat, a creative, mystical couple of Tibetan Buddhism is in perfect embrace, symbolizing harmony. This is its center, from which instant beauty and form manifest. It is the center of the perfected spoken word. In the heart center flames the Christian torch, the agape of light and love. Christ's statement, love thy neighbor as thyself, may be more correctly read as light up thy neighbor as thyself. In the heart, thy neighbor is known to be thyself. The Lion of Judah whirls round and round at the solar plexus, his tail clutched by his teeth. What an ironic position for the King of Beasts. How religious laws have gripped man during the age of Pisces in traditional obedience, tightly held secrets, dogmatism, must be released, a thing of the past. Awake mankind, be one with the radiating white light beaconing the Citadel's entire lighthouse. Let's go back to the Atlantean deck. Obviously it was destined for the pyramid in Atlantean times to be wrecked by the planetary forces that had formerly held it together. False conditions controlled through stern, instinctive dictatorships existed and were dispelled lest they gain complete control and deform the development of Earth's potentials. Their entire continuum was scattered over the ocean of the unconscious and submerged as we see in this card. To escape the destruction, the essence of male and female were placed in a submarine time capsule to await a new state of being. The medieval deck contained a similar message. Here, the intellect attempted to reach his zenith of collective power. But as in the tale of the Tower of Babel, Jehovah's lightning struck to separate man from a united whole into many races, many tongues and creeds. The medieval and the Atlantean decks demonstrate the misuse of egotistical power. It may come as a surprise to some, but consciousness has to do with the feeling nature rather than the analytical mind or the mind itself. Consciousness is a subjective rhythm, a melodious space flow and harmony with the drumbeat of time. The fact that the Citadel's six spheres are in the order given is a hint that there is only one song for all. The six chakras aligning man's body dictate his bodily function through his nervous system and glands into an individual integrated whole. So too the six great religions, which up to now dictate through might and right, must join together as beads on a single string into one world body. Moral integrity shall become an individual responsibility. You can't cheat yourself. The only true revolution comes from within. The citadel is within each person, a stronghold not to be denied. We need no longer be subject to anyone. You are your own citadel, be it. 